Um, hello, everyone, and thank you very much to Marie and her colleagues for organizing the seminar. Um, I very much support the comments by um, Dr. Uh, Stranell about um, the, the need for the nuclear industry to promote tritium as being safe right around the world. That's paramount, and it's probably the main reason why at Japan they're proposing to dump radioactive water into the sea. In other words, they have to keep up with the pretense that tritium is safe. Um, I, I'm going to talk today very briefly about, about tritium and its dangers. Radiation and radioactivity is, is a very difficult matter to get across. Um, <laughs> I've spent 30 years of my life studying it. But, um, at the very least, this will be an introduction to the dangers of tritium. And um, I'm also going to be showing you the link to my um, further work on tritium, which people can peruse at their leisure. Right. The first thing I want to get across is that there are two, broadly speaking, two kinds of radiation. Firstly, external radiation kind of radiation you get if you, say, break your arm and you go to the hospital and get an x-ray. But more serious is the radiation that you get from radionuclides inside the, your body. That is much more serious because it radiates you 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And tritium is primarily and totally an internal radionuclide. So we really have to um, concern our, ourselves with internal radiation. Now, tritium is what we call a, a radioactive isotope. Um, by that, I mean, if you take a radioactive atom, it's unstable, it will disintegrate or decay with a given half-life, and when it decays, it, um, it releases energy and also oftentimes a particle. The two of them to combine are, is called radiation. So that's what happens when we are irradiated from inside. These radioactive atoms stay in our body and emit radiation and particles inside us. So what is tritium? Well, tritium is the radioactive isotope of hydrogen, which is the smallest element. It has quite a long half-life, 12.3 years, and it decays by emitting a beta particle inside you. Here is a, a tritium atom. It has a proton and two neutrons, and it's um, a single electron going around about it. Why is tritium important? Well, well, it's for about many reasons. For a start, it's the vital, a vital component in nuclear weapons. When we talk about hydrogen bombs, that's the hydrogen. It should really be called the tritium bombs. Tritium is produced in all nuclear reactors and reprocessing plants. It's produced in all disused reactors around the world. And it's also, it would be produced in fusion reactors if they ever got going. I doubt that very much that would occur. What is the most common uh, way of us seeing tritium and is with radioactive water, tritiated water. We all know that water is H2O like this. And one of these two hydrogen atoms is radioactive. So the water becomes radioactive. It's not something in the water, but it's the water itself. Here's a, a schematic diagram of water, H, two H's, and an oxygen atom at a 180 degree angle here. Now, one of these hydrogen atoms becomes radioactive. 
That's what um, tritiated water means. Now, one of the main phenomena of tritium is that it, it swaps with its radioactive atoms with um, atoms nearby. For example, this is a, a diagram of a number of water atoms, water molecules, I beg your pardon. Um, H is here, oxygen is here. And what happens is that, um, this has to do with quantum mechanics, is that these hydrogen atoms swap with adjacent water molecules like this. These two atoms will swap very quickly and it takes about 10 to the minus 15 seconds. So that no matter where you've got tritium, um, you'll see that it spreads very rapidly throughout the environmental materials. It means that um, the tritium spreads very, very quickly, um, uh, no matter where it's found, and that makes it dangerous. I'm going to talk now, um, switch to the various so-called safety levels of how of tritium in water. Um, this is Becker, expressed in becquerels per liter. A becquerel is one nuclear disintegration per second. Uh, EU has got a limit of 100 becquerels per liter. The United States is seven times greater. In Ontario, where there's a lot of tritium um, because of the nuclear power plants, it has recommended a limit of 20 becquerels per liter. In Colorado and the States, it's 18. In California, 15. These are recommendations, by um, the way. There's quite a lot of uh, politics involved in these limits. For example, the Ontario government refuses to recognize what has been recommended. Um, and this limit here is just a recommendation, but it's not enforced by um, uh, the interior government. Now, what I'm going to do now is show you um, some of the science behind um, the dangers of tritium. This is um, a map of, the, as it happens, the Danube River going through Romania. It doesn't really matter. This is a power station here, Chernovoda. And this is a, the results of modeling of the release of tritium um, in a, a northwesterly direction um, over a 24 hour period. Shows you here what the doses are from ingestion. You can see that the closer you live to the power station, the higher the dose. And the reason why I'm showing you this is, this is a scientific exercise by nuclear scientists as it happens. Here we go here, the IAEA, back in 2007. And we could look at another study, for example, this one here, showing similarly, this is organically bound tritium doses after a release of, uh, of um, uh, one uh, terabecquerel tritium from the Chernobyl plant. And um, so not Chernobyl, Chernobyl plant. And so these are estimates of the radioactive uh, isotopes coming out and the resulting doses, okay? This is, so you may, this may not be made available to the public, but this is what scientists actually do do and what they actually figure out what will be the resulting doses. This is a, a chart showing that as the further away uh, the, the closer you get, I should say, to a nuclear generating station in kilometers, 40, 30, 20, 10, zero. These are the results of the concentration of tritium in air. As you can see, the closer you get, the higher the air concentrations. These are power stations in Canada. You may say, well, why am I using this? Well, because this is the only data that we've got available, which I can show you in a easily demonstrable form. This is air concentrations, but if you look at concentrations in uh, soil, vegetation, and food moisture, you can see the same pattern. 
uh, distance from the nuclear generating stations in kilometers. 100 kilometers, um, 10, one, this is a, a logarithmic scale. You can see that it's a more or less a straight line. And look, in other words, the closer you get to a nuclear facility, the higher the concentrations, uh, and whether it's soil, vegetation, or milk, and vegetables. So how do people who are living near nuclear facilities, and this includes Fukushima, get their tritium? Well, from water and food, water and drinks, and breathing it in, skin absorption, and from organically bound tritium in food. In other words, people who live near nuclear facilities become tritiated. There's nothing you can do about it. You live there, you get tritium. So that's why it's a danger. And, and that's why we are very concerned about uh, TEPCO's and Japanese government proposals to dump tritium into the sea. Now, this is difficult for us perhaps to grasp. Um, you can't hear it, see it, smell it, uh, tritium. Oh, sorry, I'll go back one. Um, but it's still there. We have to act as if it's present. And I'm going to give an example of this. For example, uh, most of us <laughs> do our cooking. We all know that um, if, if when we come to raw meat and raw fish, um, we're very careful, very wary about handling them because of the dangers of food bacteria. Even though we can't see the bacteria, we know that it might be there. So the same with tritium, we need to be wary and act if it's there, as if it were there, okay? Now there are serious problems about tritium. Why do I go on and wait around about tritium? The first is that it's quick distribution. Because of its extreme uh, exchangeability of, of water molecules, and because and that means that um, water is, of course, the most important element uh, item in the environment, it means that when you pump out tritium to the environment, it goes all the way through the environment very rapidly. In other words, as soon as you have tritium in the environment, the whole environment becomes contaminated. So it's a quick distribution. That's the first um, pattern. The second is tritium's radiation biology. It's got a very short range beta particle, roughly speaking about the diameter of a, of a chromosome. So what to, whether it's dangerous or not depends where it is. For example, is it um, near DNA or RNA? If it is, it's very dangerous. Um, in the past, um, particularly with the nuclear industry, they described tritium as a weak emitter. <laughs> but if you know anything about radiation biology, is that the lower the range, the more dangerous it is. In other words, tritium is, has got a, a low energy, but it's got um, is more dangerous than those radionuclides which are strong emitters. Sounds paradoxical, but it's true. I'm a radiation biologist, so I know that to be the case. The third thing is it's a property of organic bounding. Uh, there's very little recognition given uh, in whether by the nuclear industry or by even by the IAEA or ICRP uh, to the dangers of organically bound tritium. Essentially, when we get it uh, inside us, it sticks to us and has um, a long half-life or a long, uh, not only long radiological half-life, but biological half-life. And this is very poorly recognized in the doses and what they estimate for tritium. So the overall conclusion is that official dose estimates for tritium are significantly underestimated. In other words, Whenever we see them saying there's so many microsieverts, eh, uh, that's very unreliable. A good way of looking, looking at it is to say, it's the same as arguing that the number of angels on a pinhead. This is what um, religious arguments were in the Middle Ages. 
we argued how many angels can you get in a pinhead? It's irrelevant and highly. And so these dust, dust estimates for tritium are very unreliable. Now, it's not just me who's saying these things. This is um, uh, five publications which uh, are brought out, which show and uh, discuss the controversy over tritium. This is the UK government report here, 2007. This is the IAA report, again, 2007, my own report, the United States report, and a, a good report by Arjun Makijani. And you can dig these out and read them, and they say exactly what I can say. So the main conclusions that near reactors or all nuclear facilities, including Fukushima, there are high concentrations in the air, in food and water. That means high tritium exposures to people living nearby. And that means there's likely to be increased incidences of cancers, particularly leukemias and birth defects. But of course, <laughs> you can't really uh, pick these up unless you do really expensive, long lasting epidemiological studies. And there, <laughs> these are far, very few of them. And uh, the nuclear industry tends not uh, to conduct these studies. My recommendations are we should use the precautionary principle. In other words, we should err on the side of caution. Be careful. Secondly, we should do the epidemiology studies that I'm recommending. Thirdly, we should revisit tritium symmetry and take into account all these characteristics which are dangerous. And most important, we should advise local people all about tritium's dangers. This is the a link to um, my own website, which discusses uh, uh, the houses of tritium. This, this the report is about 14 pages long. <laughs> I'm not apologetic about that. Um, the point is that tritium does have a lot of dangers and we have to study them. Thanks very much for your attention. Thank you.